everyone, Slave to the Games back with another Assassin's Creed review, but this time we are going over Assassin's Creed 2. As I said before, I still will be streaming and then reviewing every game up to Odyssey. I hope that I can have a hopefully full understanding of every aspect of the story, modern and past, before I finally get to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla at the end of the year. Thank you for choosing to hang out with me, and I hope you enjoy the video. First, I would like to stick to the previous video's style and start with the things I liked about the game. I really enjoyed the navigational puzzles. While there wasn't that many of them, they were fun. They actually preferred there being less than overusing it. It felt like the perfect balance of them. And honestly, you could completely ignore them if you wanted. They weren't required. They weren't that hard either. I didn't really struggle that much, and even when I only made a slight mistake or two, it was very easily fixed. Thankfully, none of them were pointlessly complicated, as while I like puzzles, I dislike spending hours trying to solve them. The wanted posters in the game felt like a breath of fresh air as a notoriety system was added to the game, and it added a way of lowering or all around removing your, let's say, wanted level. While it wasn't to the extent of Odyssey, it was still an enjoyable addition to the game nonetheless, and I really did use it more than a few times. Simply to the point were the ability to use two hidden blades. If that wasn't badass enough, at least to me, we got double executions and could also even fight with them. Which I then proceeded to fight through the entire game with just the hidden blades and throwing knives at some point early on. And finally, I love the fact that health was tied to the quality of armor you were wearing as this seemed a pretty realistic way to explain away how you could take so many hits. Though of course the reasoning, it's not perfect, but it is a nice touch nonetheless. While the story itself was decent and the overall quality of the game was better than AC1, I still feel that AC1 was a more powerful story, and that the characters themselves, the parts where they gave their speeches, the dialogue scenes, etc, were more entertaining than in AC2. I really don't know how to explain it other than saying it's just everything about AC1 just felt powerful. From when you were assassinating someone and the sound effect that came out that gave you chills, to the powerful speeches they gave that actually just brought you in and dragged you in, it's just everything about AC1 speaks power. Where everything about AC2 is more about balance, I'd say. It's more about overall quality of it. And it doesn't mean that it's a bad story or a bad game or anything, because it's not. It's a good story, it's a good game, and I do think Overall, AC2 is better than 1, it's just in certain areas, it, it does fall down below AC1. More surprisingly, the controls were still about as clunky as the first. Maybe even more so due to the things that you could do that were added to the game. And maybe even at some points, it actually was definitely worse than the first. Which was weird, but it wasn't really something that was game breaking. It's just, it had more than a few times where I was actually really frustrated with the controls than the first one, most definitely. They unfortunately also removed the Scholar Walk. And well, it's not that it's a huge miss or huge deal, but to me, I just, I like the fact that you could blend in by just walking slower, which you can still walk slow in this, and you can blend into the crowd, but it just doesn't have the same feeling as being able to like hold A or hold a button and then just walk really slow, purposely actively trying to blend in without your character just kind of standing like normal, you know? You don't just walk at different speeds that increase or decrease their uh, detection bar, you could actually try try to show your character blending in other than just standing in the middle of a crowd and to me while it's a small thing it's still something that I unfortunately missed. The game also has two time sucks. These are killing the nine lieutenants towards the end and collecting the codex pages to view sequence 14, the last sequence of the game. While this could be explained away because at the time there was no next game out, it still sucks to have things forcefully extended unnecessarily. Honestly, both these moments just felt like ways to increase the amount of time you spent with the game when you didn't really need to actually increase it, and it felt like you were being forced to keep playing rather than you actually really wanted to. Because honestly, both of these moments could easily have just been explained away in one mission or just handing you the codex or just having these, and it wouldn't have made it any different. Honestly, it probably would have made it better. Well, either way everyone, this is going to be the end. These games reviews will most likely always be short as I am only pulling out what I liked and did not like of each game. It is safe to assume that aside from what I didn't like and what I do like, that everything else about the game is completely satisfactory, or at the very least, nothing that I disliked. 
Thanks for hanging out with me, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, join my Discord through the link in the description or the About Me section, and possibly join my Patreon to help further support me in what I do. Remember, it's also optional, and also remember that this is just my opinion of the game, and you are, well, free to share your own below. Catch all of you later in my next release or stream. See you all later.